Hello, and welcome to Rambletory Nonsense, episode three. I am your host, Sean, also known as Kyosho. Um, the reason for this episode, uh, I don't have a specific reason to record other than uh, I have 100 subscribers now, which amazes me because I haven't really posted anything in a while and people are still subscribing and I'm really sporadic with my updates in general because I always run into problems so that's uh, pretty cool so thanks guys Um, also I wanted to let you guys know why I haven't started a new LP or anything Um, shortly after that uh, draw a bird day video I uh, broke my microphone, my blue snowflake microphone that I've been using to do my LPs and stuff. What I'm recording on right now is a rock band microphone, and it's okay for something like this, but I can't exactly hold a rock band mic and play a game at the same time. So I haven't been doing any LPs, and hopefully I will in the future. But uh, I figured this episode, I'm just going to talk about bunch of the games I've been playing over the last year or so. And I'm going to start with a little game called L.A. Noir, which is one of the most recent games I've played. Um, I'm sure you've all heard of it. If not, you must not be very into gaming, even at least current gaming. Uh, it's made by Rockstar. Uh, I think it was actually developed by a a subsidiary of theirs in in Sydney, Australia, or maybe I'm confusing that, but I don't think it was the same team that did Grand Theft Auto 4, for instance, nor was it the same team that did uh, Red Dead Redemption. But still, they all sort of... Well, they all use the same engine. They all are touched up and, and, and messed with a bit by Rockstar North, so they all have the same sort of flavor, sort of. (coughs) (coughs) Sorry, I have a cold. I always seem to record when I have a cold. Anyways. So, I wanted to tell you a story of sorts. Uh, Several years ago, when I was a member of the Home of the Underdogs forum and several other forums, like maybe about ten years ago, um, People would always post threads asking, what is your ideal game that has never been made but you want to see made? Or, you know, random stuff like that. And one of the things I always posted was a detective adventure game that is extremely, extremely detailed and realistic to, to the point where something like the the color of the paint on the walls or the 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 lack of the carpet being uh swept or something like that is a big clue or can be or just some random stuff like that now of course that type of game hasn't quite been made yet but uh LA Noir when I was playing it made me think of that from that all those years ago talking about that and you know it it was I I really enjoyed the game but it, it definitely had its uh, drawbacks but it was pretty good overall um I made a little list of stuff to talk about it since it was one of the most recent games I played and I didn't want to forget anything but um yeah you know it's a, it's pretty much a a pure adventure there's not much action other than at specific parts in the main story, and then there's there's the <coughs> side quest type things, missions, where that's that's actually where most of the shooting in the game is. Uh, there, I actually didn't do very many of those. I did a few, and I just pff, I wasn't I was more interested in the cases. It was like a lot of times I could not be. I, I had no interest in doing it. I'd rather just keep doing the case. I didn't want to be distracted. Um, it was kind of like they took Grand Theft Auto 4 in Red Dead Redemption and then they stripped away tons of features 
and then they put back in some new features. Like, the basic driving of Grand Theft Auto 4 is there with these old cars that I don't think they explode, but they can break down. But it's hard to get them to even do that. But, um... But a lot of the stuff w was gone, and actually, I think I kind of liked it that that they changed it so much. Sorry, I need a drink. Ah, yeah, I should edit that out, but I'm not going to. So it was pretty cool that they use the same engine for these games, but they're, they're they they feel different. I mean, obviously they're in different settings, but. L.A. Noir did not feel like Grand Theft Auto in the 40s. It felt like a different type of game. I guess because of the, the way you play. Um. <coughs> so, yeah, very unprofessional coughing, drinking. Um. So, yeah, there, there's a lot of little stuff that bothered me with it, like it was too easy in general just too easy the no matter what you did you pretty much couldn't screw up a case um, the, the 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 dialogue system with the, with the the interrogations and, and the interviewing of witnesses you're supposed to be able to tell it, it you have three choices when you ask them a question and well after they answer you you can either say you believe they're telling the truth, you doubt their response, or they're telling a lie. And if they're telling a lie, you have to go into your little clue book and, and prove that they're telling a lie based on some evidence you've found. But uh, the problem is you're, you're, they've got this animation system that everybody's talking about, and it's, it's nice, sure. It, it actually, it actually kind of reminds me of... Um, the movie uh, A Scanner Darkly. Uh, I never actually saw it, but I, I saw trailers for it, and I even watched a trailer for it like yesterday. And it, yeah, it does remind me of that a lot. Where they, basically they they drew over actual actors for that movie. Anyways, <clears throat> the actors in the game are well, for one, they're acting. Actors <laughs> are basically liars. And that they're they're lying when they're acting, they're they're pretending. They're I, I don't know how to explain it. So a lot of times, even when they're telling the truth, sometimes if they're not really good actors, they seem like they're lying. Or when they're trying to seem like they're lying, uh, it's just very confusing. And a lot of times, I got things wrong because. I incorrectly read the actors rather than the performance, or whatever. It it's hard hard to explain, but and then and then you know you would pick an option, and the guy you're playing as, uh, Cole Phelps, he <laughs> he would respond in the craziest ways sometimes, like you'd be talking real nice to someone. And they'd say, oh no, that wasn't me. And all of a sudden, bam, he's screaming at him and yelling at him. And, I don't know. One thing I want to say about both Red Dead Redemption and uh, L.A. Noir is that the character, main characters in their game, those two games, are not uh, stereotypical. Like... If you're doing a, a noir game, you would think that you'd have a guy that talked with a little bit of a, a funny 40s accent and and all kinds of cliche stuff, but they didn't do that. That would have been the easy way out, but no, they make him seem more like a, a real person. And the same with Red Dead Redemption. They did that with, with John Marsden. He didn't sound like, you know, John Wayne or something like that. He did have a, a southern accent, but he didn't sound like your typical cowboy that you would... The stereotypical cowboy. That, I think that's pretty cool. But at the same time, I didn't really like Cole Phelps entirely as a character. And that, that's, a, that's a big trend in games in recent years, I think. Where you don't entirely like the character you're playing as. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but whatever. Um, there are 
collectibles in the game, of course. And I've got no problem with collectibles. That's That can be fine. Uh, it can even be fun occasionally. But there was one collectible in the game. Something, uh... Film reels or something? I didn't see a single one the entire way through the game. I think it's just something you pick up and, and you don't actually get to see the film. If you do get to see the film, I'm going to be really annoyed. Because I played through the whole game and didn't find a single one. And then there's newspapers, which I found all but one. I don't know how I missed one, because they're always right in the crime scenes and stuff. Um, that, that was, That's another problem I had with the game, was that there are three storylines going on at once. There is the main storyline, then there is World War II flashbacks, and then there is the newspaper storyline. And the newspaper storyline, well, they all sort of tie together, sort of, in different ways, and eventually they all kind of tie together, but it's so kind of disjointed. I I, I don't know. I, I, I like the story in the game, but, eh, I don't know, I think it could have used some tweaking. Now... There's a point in the game, about halfway through the game, that <laughs> it's really strange. The game is at its best about halfway through the game. Like, the best missions, well, the best uh, crime scenes, the best uh, cases, that's the word I'm looking for, the best cases are about halfway through the game when you're in the homicide office, when you're working for homicide. And then you get shifted into another department eventually. I won't say why, I won't say where you get shifted to, but you do, and then the game totally changes, and I'm not saying it's not good. It definitely is. It gets better as it goes, but it's almost like you st you're starting a new game over because everything's different, and I don't know. I, I kind of wish they had put the homicide stuff at the end, but then, uh, then again, I guess it was more realistic. Like, the way Cole Phelps... The way his plot played out was more realistic in general. Like how he would progress through the department, I guess. The police department, or whatever. <clears throat> um, was there anything else I wanted to talk about with that? I'm just looking at my list here. I didn't even actually look at it. Uh, yeah, whatever. Doesn't matter. Oh, one of the things they took out which I actually kind of liked was... Well, I liked and didn't like is they didn't have uh, ammo management at all. You just... They had reloading, which is good, but didn't have ammo management, and they didn't have gun collecting. Like, you could pick up a gun while in the middle of a shootout and use it for the rest of that mission, assuming you could find ammo for it, but ammo that is in the form of picking, running over another gun of the same type. You couldn't even tell if you picked up ammo unless you didn't have any and tried to reload and it worked. It's very strange. But at the same time I kind of liked it. I don't know. Uh, but overall, great game. Not a Grand Theft Auto game. Not a Red Dead Redemption game. It is an adventure game. It's not an action game. There's some action sequences. It's not an action game. So if you, if you've uh, not really read much about it or seen much about it, you should go into it knowing that. All right. So, what else do I want to talk about? Oh, <laughs> uh, L.A. Noir makes me th think of uh, Assassin's Creed Two. Not not Brotherhood. I have I haven't played Brotherhood yet. I've been playing Assassin's Creed Two because I got it in a. Uh, a sale for ten bucks, or was it, no? I got it for free, a uh, dollar and some change. I had to pay a dollar and some change for shipping, basically. But uh, I played the first one. I really liked Assassin's Creed, the first game, even though a lot of people didn't. I understood why they didn't like it because it was repetitive and you did the same kind of things to get clues over and over. But the overall storyline, for some reason, I just really liked it. Now, in Assassin's Creed 2, I'm right at the end of the game. I think I have one thing to do, and the game is over. But I'm not finishing it until I collect a lot of the stuff. And 
that's what made me think of it, the uh, Assassin's Creed 2 just now, is because in L.A. Noir, the newspapers are plot relevant. You want to get the newspapers because even though they, they're kind of annoying to, to watch the, the cutscenes when you're in the middle of another case, they still are relevant and you want to see them. You need to see them. At least I feel like you need to. In Assassin's Creed 2, there is collectibles that are the same way, and yet they're the kind that you have to basically have a walkthrough to find, or you have to spend hours just looking around the cities. So I haven't actually completed that game, which has made me stop playing it and move on to other games, even though I'm right at the end. Eventually I'll just put the game in and finish it, because I'll be frustrated, and maybe w look on YouTube for the stuff I missed. And I really like Assassin's Creed 2, uh... Except for the story, for some reason, I like the story better in the first game. I know that makes no sense to a lot of people. A lot of people just thought the story in the first game was stupid and not very sophisticated and boring. And I think is the the fact is that Altair, I liked him as a character better than I liked. Uh... Wow, I'm to totally blanking on his name right now. I guess it tells you how much I like them. Uh, <laughs> oh well, it doesn't matter. You guys know who I'm talking about. I heard that the uh, the new game that's coming out has both parts with Altair and uh, man, what is his name? Ah, yeah, it doesn't matter. It um, dang. <laughs> ah, whatever. I'm not going to keep rambling. I know that's the point of this podcast is for me to ramble, but whatever. Um, so yeah, I really like the game. Except I kept running into little uh, glitches, little bugs with the game. Um, like one I actually uh, taped with uh, my digital camera. I was... It was one of those stupid missions. That's another thing I want to talk about. These friggin' missions where you have to follow somebody and they can't see you and if they see you or you get too far behind the mission fails they've done this in tons of games the Grand Theft Auto games starting with Grand Theft Auto 3 they might have done it in the older ones I don't know I didn't really play those much and uh, they, they did it in the first Assassin's Creed they did it in Assassin's Creed 2 they did it in freaking L.A. Noir. and I hate those kind of missions I just hate them uh, I always screw them up no matter I, it always seemed like, okay, I'm getting too close. I need to get back further. Oh, wait, now I'm way too far. And, oh, I hate those. I really do. And anyways, I was doing one of those missions in Assassin's Creed 2. <coughs> Excuse me. And I jumped off a ledge to follow a guy and landed on a tree. And I got stuck behind the tree, between a tree, the tree and the wall. And I couldn't get out. And I couldn't, I couldn't get out no matter what I did. And I couldn't do anything except quit the mission. Except it was right at the end of the mission. And I had been following this guy for a good ten minutes or whatever. And I didn't want to do it over because I had already had to restart the mission a couple times. And I had finally gotten to the end of the mission and then I got stuck. Ah! But, uh, yeah. Uh, what else have I been playing? Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. I hate, I hate doing these recordings when I have a cold. I just sound like crap. Uh, oh yeah, the most recent game I played was, uh, believe it or not, a Game Boy Advance game. And I just completed it last night. And it is Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance on the Game Boy Advance. Now, if probably heard of uh, Baldur's Gate before. There's the PC games that started the series. Um, Baldur's Gate, Tales of the Sword Coast, Baldur's Gate 2, Throne of Ball. <coughs> I've never actually played them, but I've watched Let's Plays. <laughs> uh, the console versions, the Dark Alliance games, are very different. They're basically in the same setting, and they're both loosely based on Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, the Dark Alliance very loosely... Uh, the regular the PC games are very based on it like the rule set but uh, the console ones are different they're basically hack and slash games like Diablo and 
I I tried the first one, maybe it was the second one, I don't even remember, on one of the consoles, maybe it was the GameCube, maybe it was, uh, I think it was the GameCube, I don't remember. Anyways, I tried it, I just can't get into those games on the, on the consoles, and yet, Dark Alliance on the Game Boy Advance, I loved that game. I just, I played it on an emulator a few years ago, and really enjoyed it, but I didn't finish it, I only played like the first few hours. But I always wanted to go back to it, and recently I bought the cartridge for really cheap. And I had been wanting to play it in a hack and slash RPG lately, and I tried Diablo and couldn't get back into Diablo. And I just thought, well, I'm going to try that again. And I just finished the game last night, and that is a great game. Probably my favorite Game Boy Advance game. <clears throat> I, I, granted, I didn't like a lot of Game Boy Advance games. I've never been into JRPGs that much, and that's a lot of what's on there. But I really liked Baldur's Gate Dark, Dark Alliance on there. It's it, it takes a lot of skill, actually. Um, the running around and well, I, I play. You can play a fighter, uh, a rogue, or an archer, whatever, or a mage. I played a mage this time. And the thing that's kind of annoying is that no matter what class you are, you can do all three things, I think. Well, at least as a mage, I could do all the spells, I could use a, uh, a bow, and I could fight and wear armor. <clears throat> I couldn't wear the best armor or use the best weapons, but almost. And the same for the bow, but I guess you don't get the, the bonus... Uh, skills and stuff, but otherwise, I don't know. I don't think I'm gonna... I was thinking I was gonna replay the game as one of the other classes, but I, I don't think I'm going to because it'd probably be about the same. I don't know. But anyways, I really enjoy the game. It's the kind of game where uh, you're you're kind of kiting. If, you got, if, it, if you've ever played an MMO, it's where you... I've probably mentioned it before in either my LPs or... or in one of these podcasts, basically, you're an enemy is running behind you, and you're occasionally turning around and either firing a spell or an arrow at them, and just running around and trying not to let them hit you, and you attacking them. For some reason, I find that a lot of fun. And in this game, you do that a lot, especially if you're a mage or an archer. I ha- I-, I might try playing a f- playing the game with a fighter because I didn't do a whole lot of melee, but I don't know. It's because, you know, as a mage, you get in close. Even with the armor, you die pretty fast. But I really liked the game. The story was it was all right, you know. You don't expect a lot of story out of a hack and slash game, really. Um, but it was pretty good. And it ended on a cliffhanger, though. Spoilers, but yeah, there was a cliffhanger. And yet there was never a sequel for the Game Boy Advance. There was Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2 for the home consoles, but not for a portable system. Which sucks, because I really like the graphic style and play style of the Game Boy Advance game a lot more than the console versions. (coughs) Ah, oh well. I guess I'll never know what happened to the character. (coughs) I'm sorry. So... That was the game I played most recently. L.A. Noir, Assassin's Creed, what else? Oh, Red Dead Redemption, Undead Nightmare. I decided to rent that from Gamefly. And I I enjoyed it. I played through the whole thing and finished it. And it was fun. I I still don't understand the people that... Some people said it was better than the original Red Dead Redemption. and And some people said it was... You know, it's a whole new campaign, and I guess it sort of is, but it's not like a serious campaign. It's it was it was pretty funny and it was fun, but there wasn't a lot of story exactly. I don't know. It was it was definitely worth playing. If you have Red Dead Redemption, you should get that DLC or or rent or buy the disc that has it on it. 
it's, it's definitely worth playing. The, the only thing I didn't like about it, and this is a small, tiny thing, is that the lock-on targeting that you always do in Red Dead Redemption... I'm not talking about the dead eye, the slowdown thing, because I never ever use that. But I'm talking about the lock on, where you hit the left trigger and it locks on, and then you just shoot with the right trigger. That doesn't work with the zombies, or maybe it does, but you have to hit zombies in the head to kill them. So that doesn't work, and that's what annoyed me. I love the lock on targeting in Grand Theft Auto. Actually, I didn't really play Grand Theft Auto 4 a lot. I played some. But I love it in Red Dead, regular Red Dead. I love it in L.A. Noir. But you couldn't really use it in the Undead Nightmare game. So, yeah, other than that, it was pretty good. Um, yeah. Hmm. What else? Uh, Portal 2! I just played that recently, not too long ago, a couple weeks ago. Holy crap, that was a good game. Uh, it's hard to believe that as long as it was in development that they actually almost completely scrapped the game they had for Portal 2 and then redid it as this. Because apparently what happened was they had a, a, a they, they set they were going to set the sequel in the 50s or the 60s, somewhere around there, 40s, 50s. And but it wasn't going to have any portals in it. You, you can read this big long article, uh, it's an interactive iPad article, I don't have an iPad, but, <clears throat> uh, there are other methods of reading it, let's just say, and it's, it's a really good article, but anyways, it's amazing to me that in the period of time between Portal and Portal 2, which was, mm, 2000, late 2007 to early 2011, so four, mm, less than four years, that they almost made a whole game, scrapped it, and then made a whole nother game, so... I don't know. The reason I think it's amazing is because the story is so good. The dialogue is so good. The writing is so good. The the, the gameplay, the levels, definitely fun. Um, yeah, the puzzles are, are definitely interesting in, in new ways. But the story is, is great, and the ending is awesome, and I think everybody needs to play that game. Like, my sister, who absolutely loves uh, Pixar movies, I think she would love Portal 2, because Wheatley, the character of Wheatley, and even Gladys to an extent, they're very much sim very similar to Pixar characters, especially Wheatley. And <clears throat> uh, the comedy is just so good. I, I really think my sister would like it, but she would never play it. And I could never get her to watch me play it. Well, I don't see her often enough to even do, do that. I don't know. I might be able to talk her boyfriend into getting the game and making her watch and play it or something. But I really think she would love the story of that game. I think she would find it hilarious. I think a lot of people would. In fact, I think if you don't, if you've got family members that aren't into games, that that would be a very good game to suck them in with. The first Portal, I would say you should play that first. They they should play that first. Whoever, but there is a, you need a little bit more skill for the first game. The first game you have to move the mouse. Oh, if you're you playing with the mouse, you have to be a little more accurate in, in, with the mouse in the first game. This one, you just kind of have to do more thinking. Uh, but in general, wow. Great, great game. But the only problem is, it really, really makes me want Half-Life 3. Really, really, really? By the way, if I sound funny, I'm laying back while recording this at the moment. Um, but yeah, I really, really want Half-Life 3. Or Half-Life Episode 3. Half-Life 2 Episode 3. Or... or whatever they want to call it with Half-Life in the name. I really want that. And Valve is not saying anything about it. You know they have to be working on it. They have to be. I mean, they announced Episode 3 how many years ago, and they haven't really ever said it wasn't coming out. Ugh. I know, I know the, the problem is probably they... they Valve is if you read if you read like the uh, 
well that i that long ipad art- article i was talking about or if you've read the what is the book Ra- raising the bar the, the the it's a book about half life 2 and uh basically if you if you read in, if you know enough about valve you know they're perfectionists they want to make the best game ever every time they make a game and i think with half life 3 or whatever they might call it they are probably working on a brand new graphics engine because even though source the source engine they've updated it a ton and it and in portal 2 it still looks really good i'm sure that's the reason that this half life 3 is taking so long is because they want to update everything to look better which is kind of annoying because it's going to take longer and has taken longer it's been when did episode 2 come out 2006-ish? That's what my guess is. It's been way too long. Way too long. That cliffhanger at the end of episode 2, I'm not going to say what it was in case any of you haven't played it. But man, they need to... Ah, they need to put out another one of those. Yeah. Uh, what else? What other games? What other games? You know, for a long time I wasn't playing any games, and then the last, I don't know, six months I've been playing a lot. Um, hmm. I haven't, uh... I've watched a lot of Let's Plays, too. Uh, I've probably mentioned it before, but Variax is probably my favorite Let's Player. Um, I just love his Let's Plays. Well, especially his blind ones. Like, right now he's doing Knights of the Old Republic blind, and I haven't watched it, but I'm going to. If, if you want to watch if, a Let's Play of The Witcher, watch his, because it's a blind LP. And I, I, I think blind LPs are so much more entertaining than LPs of people that have, you know, they, they're experts at the game or they've at least played it before. Because you're you're discovering the game along with them, even if you've played it, like if you've played it, you're you're, you're seeing things that you know things are coming up, and you're just waiting to see their reaction. Or if you haven't played it, you're you're experiencing it with them. And of course, people make lots of comments saying you should have done this or this or this, and Variax really gets a bit uh, annoyed with that. I think he thinks people are criticizing him. So Variax. If you're listening to this, people aren't criticizing you. They're just, they just think they know they're they know better or something. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Why am I talking to Barry X? He's not gonna listen. To this. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so yeah, I've been watching a lot of Let's Plays. I've been playing a lot of games. I've been doing a lot of other stuff. Um, I can't really think of any other games I've played. I know I've played some. Oh, oh, Singularity. <laughs> I'm sure you've heard of it, or if you haven't, I can understand why. It wasn't it wasn't well promoted at all. It's a first person shooter. It's on the PC, the Xbox 360. It might be on the PS3. I'm not sure, but uh, it's made by. Raven Software, <clears throat> and it is kind of a um, kind of a, a, a matchup or a, a puzzle that has been put together from pieces of many other games. They took little elements of tons of different games and kind of stuck them all together in <laughs> in this one game. Like there is a gravity gun element, sort of like Half Life Two. There is all kinds of stuff. The environment is kind of a Bioshock like. There's anyways, a lot of people didn't like this game. And I think they were expecting something completely different than what they got. If you go into it thinking it's going to be similar to Half-Life, Half-Life 2, like as far as pacing and stuff, <clears throat> I think you'll really like it because they 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 completely like copied Valve's method of oh my god lots of action and then 
no action, some puzzles, and then, oh my god, lots of action, and then some other stuff, and, you know, <laughs> it's it's paced really well, and yet, <clears throat> got fairly bad reviews, but I, I really liked it. I played through the whole thing, and I watched all the endings, and I even started playing it a second time just because I was bored one day, and <clears throat> it was a pretty decent game. I wouldn't say it is one of my favorite games, but it was pretty good. And, hmm. Uh, what else? Oh, I played Modern Warfare 2. I've had that game on my 360 for forever, but I never play it because I don't, I don't know, I just don't play online anymore, and I never really did a lot in the first place. That's what I got it for. <clears throat> and I, I just prefer PC controls, so that's what turned me off, and I just didn't really play it much. And I, I remember when I first got it, I, I, I tried playing the single player, and I just couldn't get into it. It was very uh, set-piece driven, you know, you're at a certain special kind of location and that's interesting to have gunfights at, but otherwise isn't very interesting. And I, the story didn't catch me, but... This time I figured, I need something else to play at, at this one time. I really need something to play. I have this here. I'm going to play it. So, actually, once you get about halfway through the game, it's really good. The story isn't excellent. It's not great by any means, but it is... It's pretty good. Um, and I actually quite liked the the last third of the game or so. Last fifth of the game or so. Where... I, I don't want to spoil anything, but you're basically out for vengeance, basically. I, I like vengeance in video games. I don't know why, but it always works for me. Um, just I'm just rambling here, but uh, like in uh, one of the reasons I really love the first uh, Gabriel Knight game, and that's what hooked me on the series. Really, was this one part where someone dies and you, the character gets really angry and and emotional and really wants revenge and I kind of did too and there was something in I, I probably brought this up before but in Grand Theft Auto 3 at the first third of the game you're on one island and when you go to the second island you find out you were gonna you were be you were betrayed and your first mission is to go back and kill the people that betrayed you and I really like that too. For some reason I just really like that in games. But uh yeah, Modern Warfare two it, it it was better than I thought it was. It was better than my first impressions. Uh oh and back to singularity, even though the story wasn't great, it was really fun. The the story was fun. The there's time travel in Singularity, as you can probably guess, and it just it was fun. And I also caught the Back to the Future references in the, in the game. They're they're minor. The the references references are only in the year that you go back to is 1955, and then the dates of the calendar are in the present time are the week that he was... Oh, I forget what it is now, but it, it correlates to Back to the Future, so I, I don't think anybody, unless they're a really hardcore fan of Back to the Future, would know that, but I've watched those movies so many times over the years that I caught that, and that was kind of cool, but I, I really liked that game. Modern Warfare 2, I didn't like quite as much, but it was, it was fun. <clears throat> Portal 2, really, really good. L.A. Noir, pretty decent. Yeah, pretty good. Um... Better than I than I thought it would be, to be honest. Um, Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance on the Game Boy Advance, I really really liked. Um, don't remember what else I talked about. I talked about too many nice things. Assassin's Creed Two. I, I once I finish it, I, I assume I'll like it. <coughs> but there's plot. Like I said, there's plot based collectibles that I want to really want to get, and I just it stopped me from playing the game. Uh, anyways, I think I rambled on for long enough. Um, thanks for subscribing. I appreciate all the hundreds of subscribers. 
and hopefully I'll get a new mic and be able to do some Let's Plays soon. Also, I'm not going to bother editing this, and I'm sorry about the coughing and the sniffles and the the whatever, the getting a drink. I don't remember. I think I did that. I don't remember. Anyways, <clears throat> man, I, I'm losing my voice now. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks for subscribing. I'll get to some new LPs. Have a nice day and listen to some music. Oh, it's loud.